Hello, November. Happy Scorpio season. Ooh, I don't know about that, Christine. But um, happy <laughs> Thanksgiving month where I get okay. to eat turkey and fall asleep faster than normal. Oh, tryptophan? Are you a tryptophan, tryptophan fan? I am a fan of the tryptophan fan. Wait, tryptophan. Oh, it's our... M. we're not supposed to release our Thanksgiving musical yet. Oh, speaking of Thanksgiving musicals, pass. The crit. Oh, <laughs> I got too excited. <laughs> Pass the cranberry sauce. We're having mashed potatoes. Ooh, the turkey looks great. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for being there. Everyone's thanking the whole world's thanking you for. Thanking us for thanking you. Kill, kill the turkey. turkey. <laughs> Jack, can you line that up? There's, it's a little more awkward when we're there's a lag, but uh, I'm sure it'll sound just impeccable when it comes out it, yeah, into yeah. the airwaves. Impeccable, like a turkey pecking away. I don't impeccable. know. Impeccable. That's the name of our uh, our musical. Impeccable. The last the time. The last time we did that, we didn't have an editor, so he was pro- he's probably like, what was oh, that? Oh, true. He's probably like, what the <laughs> fuck was that? Are they... Uh, is, are they... Did he probably they... deleted it already. Like, this can't be something they want the public to hear. <laughs> <sighs> okay, well, um, happy Kill the Turkey Month, and... Oh uh hmm i you know christine how are how are you feeling about november so far as as we record it in october well you know i'm always a little sad when halloween is over um and i'm not i know that as the co-producer of the musical impeccable the musical i <laughs> should think otherwise but i'm not a huge fan of thanksgiving it's just it's well, just always yeah. been a very loaded time you know uh, literally and figuratively and so uh I think we're going to, you know, it'll it'll be fine. It'll be fine. We're going to Blaze's family this year, which is always fun and like takes me directly out of all the bullshit that used to, you know, love that <laughs> drown me. Um, and then it's Christmas time. Christmas so, time. No, is no, it's not oh, not time. that musical. Not yet. Wrong not yet, musical. Not yet. M. I knew you were gonna do that. That's why I whispered. You always I... steal my thunder with that one. I can't wait to sing that in the month with you on the listeners episode. How are you feeling with November looming? November, well, yeah, if there's such a thing, I mean, there is a, such a thing as seasonal affective disor- uh, depression. <laughs> seasonal affective disorder, is that what it is? Yes, yeah, I forget it. Yeah. Seasonal affective I disorder. only get it directly after Halloween, and I'm like, oh, well. <laughs> what a weird coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> well, all the joy I've had, uh, I've finally found my burnout, hard... and it is on November 1st every, yeah, day, every no, year. Yeah, it, no, like, it feels, it's just, there's such a, it's just It's a, a build bummer. up for all this fun, and then, because October's always the fun month where, like, every weekend I got something going on. Yeah. I got you know allison's birthday and that's always a thing and so then i'm like i've exhausted myself so november 1st is like oh no like this is oh, now i've got nothing crashing, to look forward crashing. to until i get to eat in like 20 days but um <laughs> uh i'm excited because this november 1st marks that i'm about to have my annual hangout with my aunt and my cousins and i'm about to eat a lot of really good food so That'll i have that delightful. to look forward to yeah, and uh, fun fact, everyone, Eva picked some very timely stories today, some Day of the Dead, Dia de los Muertos stories for us. And so, um, you know, we're on theme. Uh, we are still celebrating, even though Halloween's over. Uh, and we only have some Christmas magic to look forward to. Um, so, you know what? We're going to... This is me trying to give myself a pep talk, by the way, if anyone's nope. wondering. Um, okay. Yeah. You go ahead. We're going to be fine. Okay. It's fine. Is it working? It's fine. My pep talk? I feel like I'm just shouting. <laughs> ah! <laughs> um, hmm. No, I think you did a great, great opener there. Christine did a good job. Thanks. <laughs> nailed um, it. We'll talk about it backstage. Nailed um, it. Okay. So, yeah, we got the day after the day de, de los muertos. So, because um, <laughs> it's November 1st, right? 
Isn't that, that is Dia de los Muertos. Is that the actual day? Yeah. I always get it mixed up. Is it, what, oh, okay, the well first. then that's all, the day perfectly on brand. Yeah. Good job, Eva. In my mind, yeah. I already confused them. You are um, silly. And we've got uh, a handful of others, I've been told. Um, so yes. it's a, a bit of a, uh, a uh, ooh, like a, like a trick or treat candy bag. You don't oh. know what you're going to get. Is it tricks or is it treats? We'll find out. Are you going first this time? I think Eva said for you to go first. I'm going first. This is from Alicia, she, her pronouns, and it's called Being Scolded from Beyond the Grave. Great. Hello, hola, and howdy, y'all. I've enjoyed, and that's why I drink so much since it was first suggested to me by a bookstore employee. Oh, wow. We're hitting bookstores now, Em. Good for us. <laughs> Wee! Wee! Who noticed me checking out the true crime section, LOL. I am always thankful that my path crossed with that one employee that day. That was probably M or me, just trying to, like... <laughs> insert ourselves but it's okay yeah if it weren't for them i may never have gotten into listening to any podcast so i have to preface that my story is a little weird and some people don't really believe me we do but i promise you that i've been scolded and punished for being disobedient to my mother from beyond the grave this is uh -oh. troubling because i feel like em and i are both uh bound to experience this it's, one day it's ready to, it's at any day any day and also any like day. how how back talky do you have to be at your mom until like the fates have to enter until she's you like know? all right that's it i'm <laughs> like coming. look you can call her a lot of names but not that one that one's heading back to earth okay <laughs> all right here we go i currently reside in east texas but grew up in el paso along the border of juarez chihuahua mexico my mother and her side of the family is from mexico and my father's side is from the northeastern part of the u.s Due to growing up in the borderland, I am much more familiar with Mexican traditions and culture and was raised Catholic. So on most years, on Dia de los Muertos, Day of the Dead, we would go to the cemetery in Mexico and fix up my great-grandmother's grave site and fix slash paint her gravestone. It's Aww. a tradition I always enjoyed being able to participate in since we get to celebrate the lives of those who have passed. Due to these traditions, I've also always felt a close connection slash sensitivity to family members that have passed or even to the paranormal. I love that tradition so much. It's like such a joyful, I don't know. I just love the the whole concept of Dia de los Muertos. I think it's really special. I, I, I don't know why um, more people don't celebrate honoring the people that have passed. I feel like I've been, not that I've been like trying to like copy off them, but I've been noticing that as I'm getting older, I've had a lot of grandparents die recently. And one of my favorite things is like on their birthday or on the day that they died, it's like doing all their favorite stuff. And like, it, it's, it's so lovely, but I don't know why it's not more of a tradition uh, over here. So I know it's uh, a different approach to, uh, to death and dying, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For the purpose of this story, we are going to focus on my great-grandmother. My great-grandmother passed away a few years before I was born. I never physically met her and really only heard positive stories about her. My family always said my great-grandmother was kind, she didn't cuss, and wasn't one to raise her voice. Due to financial woes my mother's family had, there are very little pictures of my great-grandmother, so I only had seen her picture a few times. My mother always mentioned that she was really close to my great-grandmother and that she did a lot for my mother while she was growing up. My mother always said that she knew she was pregnant with me and my older sister because my great-grandmother appeared before her. My Ooh. mother swears up and down she saw a physical apparition of my great-grandmother standing in front of her, telling her she needed to be more careful because she was with child. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> Terrifying. Two scary I, things all at once. <laughs> I feel like someone's going to, like, knock a tuna salad sandwich out of her hand or something like the things you're not supposed to do when you're pregnant, like cold yeah, cuts yeah. or fit, whatever. <laughs> Just Ugh. sushi. Get that out of here. You're with child. <laughs> Disappear. <laughs> Fast forward many years later, and I'm around 15 to 16 years old. My teenage years with my mother were hard. I was emotional and angsty. Deep inside, all I wanted was to let my emo child out. This is, oh, sorry. I was reading my journal by mistake. Just kidding. <laughs> was that your Zanga? I'm sorry. Oopsie. <laughs> my live journal escaped. <laughs> Deep inside, all I wanted was to let my emo child out, and my parents didn't let me. The most emo I was allowed to be was painting my nails black and listening to Death Cab for Cutie, Fallout Boy. Okay. It was the same it sounds like you. It sounds like you got pretty far, though. It sounds like you got where you needed to be. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I was only allowed, I wasn't even allowed to paint my fingernails black, but I was allowed to wear Converse. That was about as far as I got. Um, I like how Converse was like 
labeled as like for the streets and like I know and I would uh, just the scariest type of people at my private school with uniforms it really was it was like whoa what are you wearing you know it's like you're so offbeat that's crazy you're so whimsical I was like no I'm depressed and they're like yeah and now I can't wear them anyway so they they win thanks to my flat feet (laughs) Oh, I was like, wait, why? Okay, I thought they were canceled or something. I was like, oh, no. The most emo I was allowed to be was painting my nails black and listening to Death Cab, Panic at the Disco, Fall Out Boy, Green Day, Linkin Park, etc. away from my parents. I feel like Christine and I would have been fairly similar in high school. That's Agreed. Okay. Clearly, I spoke too soon. Anyway, back to great grandma story. During my youth days, my mother and I fought all the time. But we had one particular explosive fight that set everything off. We were yelling in the kitchen and I was so heated that I felt like I had smoke coming out of my ears. I don't Mm. even remember what the fight was about. Well, when I went to bed, I had a dream, not just any dream. An older woman appeared in my dream. She had never appeared in my dreams before. In this dream, she was scolding me for the way I talked to my mom. She didn't raise her voice at me. She was calm, but she meant business. She talked to me in a stern voice and was pinching the back part of my upper arm. Yeah. I remember waking up in the middle of the night with arm pain, but figured it was because it was happening in the dream. I must have thought it was real. Well, I woke up the next day with bruises in that same area from my dream, and I was a little scared. I eventually made up with my mother the following day, and we were good. But it's not over yet. The same woman came back in my dreams the following night, and I didn't see her again after that. A few days after the second dream, a few of us were looking over my parents' wedding album. We were looking at a picture with my mom and dad in front of the church they got married at with the same old lady from my dreams standing between them. My blood ran cold. I turned to my mother and asked her to verify who the woman was. I don't know why, but in my dream, I didn't recognize her. But as soon as I saw the picture, it's like I remembered she was my great-grandmother. As mentioned before, we don't have too many pictures of her, so I had to make sure I wasn't confusing her with someone else, as I hadn't seen her picture in a few years. My mother noticed that I was a little uneasy and asked me what was wrong. I told her about how after our big argument, my great-grandmother came into my dreams to scold me and even showed her some of the bruises I still had on my arms. My mother was so shocked she wasn't even shocked over the fact that my great-grandmother visited me in my dreams. She was shocked that I was able to tell her how my grandmother physically scolded me. Apparently, (laughs) this was her preferred method of scolding my mom, aunt, and uncles. Oh, my God. I never knew this. This was never told to me by anyone. My mother never shared that piece of information with me or my siblings. Also, that's, like, really specific to, like, pinch someone's upper arm. Yeah. As a scolding method. I don't know. I would never forget it if someone did that to me. Yeah. And I would never just like randomly come up with that. I feel like subconsciously, you know what I mean? Like definitely. um, It's really weird. As a believer is very good evidence. (laughs) I Uh, think so. Explain that skeptics. Explain that to me. (laughs) After the shock passed, my mother laughed and couldn't believe that even after all this time, she had someone looking out for her from the other side. To this day, I'm still wary of any arguments I have with my mother. You're gonna get, you're gonna get pinched again. Yeah, when can you imagine? Can no! you imagine being like knowing Hell that someone's looking out for you from your like bratty teen? You know, and yeah! it's like you better I would look be out. as the bratty teen. I'd be pissed. I'd be like, listen, it's hard enough. <laughs> Don't gang up on me, okay? I, in my in your next Zanga post, it's like the gods are against me. <laughs> like <laughs> the god isn't real, but he hates me apparently. Yeah, the underworld me. has spoken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody understands me. Whenever I argue with my mom, I wonder if my great grandmother will show up again to scold me. She hasn't come back to scold me yet, but I am well aware that she can and will. Since this incident, I've had a few more family members in my life pass on that I have actual memories with. I sometimes wonder if these dreams are my self conscious, just wanting to have some more encounters with them, or if they are true visitations. But I'm happy to at least know that I have my great grandmother looking after us, Alicia. That's, I like that you've turned it into a happy story because I would literally lose sleep being so I'd find a way to make it all about myself and be so <laughs> embarrassed that like even ghosts are like feeling the need to come down and do something about my attitude. Yeah, I would about be, your attitude. That's I would be so, so embarrassed because I'd be like, even people I can't see are judging me. And, and then you I know, would... I'd be pissed because like they can see all like it's not even like I can have an attitude by myself because like great grandma's probably watching then too. You know, like she knows. 
then I would turn it into like, oh my god, it's like I'm on a reality show. Like people are just, oh yeah, they can't like get over the, they can't get over me. Oh my god, they just keep walking. She's like so obsessed with me. You know. <laughs> anyway, oh. Alicia, thank you for your story. All right, the next one I have, um, it's high promises, I think, because the subject line is help me i drank an entire bottle of wine before typing this <gasps> of course my brain went oh no i thought it was gonna say i drank an entire tide bleach pod or something i don't know why i thought <laughs> we had to call poison control um, nope i think it's letting us know that this is gonna maybe be a, a bumpy ride got um, it okay <laughs> <laughs> um this is also a pre-pandemic email this is from Shut 2019 up. um Wow. So this person's the been waiting days. for a while. They've probably yeah. given up entirely on the show. That's okay. Probably. Um, they need if to you're go listening, to that bookstore where Alicia went. Yeah. <laughs> if you're listening, know that patience is a virtue. Um, <laughs> this is from uh, Cindy, and it says, "Hello, M. Christine, Eva, and Geo. As I said in my subject line, I indeed drank an entire bottle of <laughs> wine before writing you. So I will do my best to clean up the grammar. Thank you. That's nice." I have been listening to your podcast nonstop since August and have now just caught up. I'm a newborn baby photographer. At first, mm -hmm. I thought it said, I'm a newborn baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't drink that wine. Now I am like, concerned. Girl, <laughs> I'm a newborn baby photographer and listen to you while I'm editing. It's probably in poor taste, but who cares? Oh. Anyways, I live in Bolingbrook, Illinois. Bolingbrook, Illinois. And I used to live three minutes away from Drew Peterson. So I hope you cover him at some point. I have not covered Drew Peterson yet, but as Em said, uh, patience is a virtue. Okay, so just wait a minute. Wait a few more Perfect. years. Yeah, I don't know what his story is, but... Oh, I here it is. It, well, it says he's a peach, so now I'm confused. Um, huh? he one, I he think once that must came be in, sarcastic. He, oh, he once came into the local chicken joint I was working at after his wife's disappearance, and my boss made me serve him by myself. Ooh. Ugh. I'm here to tell you some ghost stories. I have a lot, and I would like to say I'm sensitive to the paranormal, but it's possible I just really want to be. Oh, like, I would like to say I'm, I'm sensitive oh, I to the paranormal, but maybe I just really want to be. I was 18 and going to college in downtown Chicago when I saw my grandfather on the train sitting across from me. It was 2010, and he died in 1997. Mm. I don't remember much about him because he lived in Mexico, and I was only six when he died, but when I saw him, I knew. He was a short man, kind of skinny, slightly hunched shoulders, with a red baseball hat, torn denim. He was carrying a lunch tote. Aww. He looked like he was going to work, and he was looking out the window and was rubbing his stubble, which is something my grandfather used to do. I stared at him for what felt like forever. He turned to me, smiled, and now for my grandfather, when he smiled, he did with his whole face. His eyes would sparkle and he would practically light up. Hmm. I knew it was him. He'd gotten on at one stop and gotten off at the next, and as soon as he was off the train and the doors closed, he was gone. I didn't see him walk in any direction. He was just gone. Whoa. I called my mom right away, and she didn't believe me at first, but as soon as I began to describe him, his gestures, and his smile, she knew it was him, too. In November 2017, my grandmother from my mom's side died, and she had been bedridden for some time, and it was a long time coming, but still was heartbreaking for all of us. My mother and I were the only ones able to go to her burial in Mexico, mm -hmm. and when we got there, everyone was sleeping in the bedroom in the back, or in the living room where her casket was. But I, for some reason, found it more comforting sleeping in her bed, even though she died in it the day before. Hmm. Ooh, that's I understand. And also, like, what a odd space to be in. <laughs> Em's your cousin who's like, OK, go for it. Uh, I'll be He's out like, here I'm, watching TV. I'm not going to fight you for that space. But also, <laughs> yeah. I I see the I see the emotional value to it. Yeah, like, yeah. What you a, feel close to them. What a heaviness. Yeah. Anyway, after her burial, my mom and I were getting ready to go back and we were going through her stuff. And my uncles had said if I wanted to take anything of hers to remember her by, I could. Mm. I decided on taking one of her oldest copies of the Bible because that's what she cherished most. Anyway, going through her stuff, my mom came across the last visa she ever got, which was when she visited us in the U.S. La mm. last in 2007. 
My mom held the ID in her hand and recalled the day she took her mom to go get it. She asked me if I wanted it, and I said no. I figured my mom packed it for herself or something. Flash forward to this past October, my mom and I had, ma had made an altar to celebrate Dia de los Muertos, and we put up photos of both of my grandfathers and my grandmother. A couple of days later, I walk into the dining room and I see in a little envelope my grandmother's visa card smack dab in the middle of the dining room table. <gasps> I think to myself, oh, that's weird, and put it right back where I found it. The next morning, my mom is screaming and freaking out. Where did you find the card? How did that get here? Did you put that here? I said, no, I found it on the table and figured you put it there. And she swore she didn't. And I told her the last time I saw that card was in Mexico, mm. the day after we buried her. And I figured my mom had packed it. My mom said, no, I didn't. And we burst into happy tears. We knew that she was letting us know that she was there. I didn't She's like, help. I still need a visa in the afterlife to get <laughs> it's like, to yeah, your house. <laughs> I still had to travel all the way here. And it yeah, was and your a lot harder on than the a train. plane. I feel yeah. like somebody needs to let your grandparents know that they can probably astral travel now. Like they don't need to take the train or the visa. Can't she just like blink or something and be there? The other one <laughs> didn't. Maybe have to, I don't know how it works. Did the other but... one also need like a boarding pass or something to go pinch her <laughs> arms? You know, like <laughs> wild. <laughs> Uh, it didn't help that for the entire month, the altar was up and our dogs wouldn't stop barking at it. Ooh. Um, and here, sorry for the long email, but here's the worst ghost story I have. I like that you went through the Rolodex in your mind and you're like, I'll give them what I'll give them all I've got. So <laughs> while the um, wine's still uh, kicking. <laughs> yeah. When I was 18, my dad was going on three years sober from alcohol, and he found a lot of help from the Catholic Church at the time and was really deep into it and was doing a lot to help find solace. Well, one particular day, I was in class and my brothers were out. My mom was in Mexico. My dad decided to do a quick blessing of the house. He grabbed the jug of holy water. I love that you have a jug. A jug. Um, <laughs> and was going from room to room when he arrived to my door and was about to splash water. When he was about to splash water, a force held his arm back, keeping him from throwing the water. Uh -oh. He tried for several seconds until he let go, and it scared him so much that he had to stop and pray. And he did not end up blessing my room. Which, oh, no. okay, that alone, I feel like it goes against every exorcist story we've ever heard where they were able to throw holy water. If they can just grab your hand before. They're like, nope. Wouldn't Think like fast. holy water have never been spilled, you know? Yeah, if, like that demons seems... can just hold you down. Also, that seems like the room that's the most in need of some holy water. But oh, right, yeah, it's oh, like well. maybe <laughs> find a squirt gun or something it yeah. doesn't recognize <laughs> yeah. and get it in there. Um, what about like an automatic sprinkler system? Then you don't ooh. have to worry about like your arm getting held. You know, interesting. Yeah, just an idea. you got to shoot it through the window or something. You got to get crafty. Yeah. Exactly. Pretend you're drinking a cup of water and then you go, oh, Oops. no. Oh, Or just no. drink it because, like, if you're like me at all, you will spill it eventually. So. You know, I've always wondered if you are possessed, why don't you just drink holy water? I don't know. Like, because it has, like, oil in it, I think. It just sounds gross. If I mean, it's, it's not worse you, than being like... possessed, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, Worth like, it. get it from the inside like a tapeworm or something, you know? Ew. Um. <laughs> um okay. So... He didn't end up blessing my room. I was going through a lot at the time with school and was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. Um, I don't blame you now that your room's oh, also possessed. Yeah, been there. But it wasn't after me. It was apparently after my dad. That mm. very same night in Mexico, my mom had a vicious nightmare and never told me the details. But she said it was so evil and so scary. It woke her right up at 3.30 in the morning. Ugh. She prayed right then, told whatever it was to leave her alone, leave her family alone and go away. A few weeks later, my dad relapsed. It's 10 Aww. years later, and he is now just going back to the program and trying to get back on track. Oof. Um, if you've made it this far, thank you for reading, and I can't wait to see you two <laughs> at The Vic, March 31st, uh, 2019. Awkward. I'm glad you saw wait, us. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, 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 it <laughs> happened in 2019. So it, it did, that one did happen. That one did happen. So okay, good, good, good. Glad you caught that. Um, <laughs> uh, so excited for the show. Love you guys, oh. Cindy. <laughs> oh, Cindy! None of us oh. knew what was hap what was coming for us. <laughs> just, just com comparatively total bliss. <laughs> wow, just ignorance is bliss, you know. Yeah. 
Whoa, what a doozy, man. Um, it's just, it makes me sad when these stories kind of end up like affecting real life when it comes to like addiction and things like that. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. life's hard enough without demons getting involved, you know? Yeah. Not, <sighs> not, um, boy, oh boy. not something worth joining on. It's adding on to my list of struggles I'm dealing with on a daily <laughs> Your basis. Your to do list. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Cindy. Let's see what we've got next. This is from Jennifer. She, her, they. And the subject <gasps> is, I tried the Estes method while sitting in a haunted chair in New Orleans. <gasps> okay. Oh. I don't know if it'll explain it in there, but for people who don't know what the Estes method is, would you like to... Uh, let me roll? just check and see if it has a little um, little description, because it might. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Hold on. For those of you who don't know, while Christine's reading, um, we have done the, the Estes method. So that's why we are personally very interested in this topic. We've done it when we were um, at a, our most recent location that we are still not disclosing because we're still in the middle of tour. Because we're still waiting for Cindy to see us at the Vic. <laughs> <laughs> but no spoilers. Um, it, it's one of Christine's favorite uh, ghost hunting methods. So. It is. Okay. I, I can explain it to you. I can explain. Um, so the Estes method, uh, I want to also give like credit where credit is due. Cause I sure as hell didn't come up with it myself. Cause, cause Christine is not the inventor. Um, no, just hell a fan. No. I'm not an inventor of anything. Um, so it was first developed by Carl Pfeiffer at the Stanley hotel in Estes park, which is why it's called the Estes method. And basically what you do is you put on noise isolating headphones and listen to a spirit box, the thing that kind of um, scans through radio frequencies and uh, spirits are able to talk in real time. And the person with the noise isolating headphones on basically just says whatever they're hearing in their ears and they are unable to hear the rest of the group. So say Em and Eve are in the room with me and I volunteer to put on the headphones and a blindfold. Uh, Em and Eva can ask questions and I, as the uh, victim, (laughs) put the headphones on (laughs) And just repeat whatever, uh, whatever I'm hearing. And when we've tried it in the past, it's pretty incredible um, because you can have a full on conversation uh, because you kind of are depriving you're like sensory deprivation. So you don't you're not getting distracted by the questions people are asking. You're not getting led in a certain direction subconsciously. Um, so it's a really cool, cool method. And we've tried it. M's done it, too. Uh, and I don't think it we ever got very you well. To do it. <laughs> Or it worked it was, very well. It worked too well, I think. <laughs> um, so that's what it is. So I'm so excited that Jennifer's like, hey, I thought about you when I did this. So Jennifer says, hello, parasocial friends. Love that. I have a doozy, but I'll try to keep it short-ish so I have a better chance at being chosen. Love the oh. show. Love the after chats. Wow. Okay. So oh. you are fucking on it. I love this. That alone got you on the show, my friend. I know, right? Look, we we love a compliment. I'll tell you that. And you threw quite a lot our way just now. Okay. If nothing else, tell us we're pretty. (laughs) (laughs) And feed us some cheese. Oh, but that's sorry, that's just me. Okay. That's just what you do. Love the show, love the after chats, love everything and everyone. Let's crack into it. Recently, I was in New Orleans with some family and decided slash booked with zero input from the rest of my party, a paranormal investigation tour. Wow, that sounds familiar to probably both Em and me. (laughs) This caught my interest as the guides bring the group to two locations and walk you through using an SLS camera, dowsing rods, EMF readers, light up cat toys. We've used those too. And spirit boxes, which I was exceptionally excited about. In fact, I was so excited the guide asked if I knew about the Estes method and my excited little dumb self was all, heck yeah, I do. And he said, you seem really open. So let's try that in our first location, which I never have let anyone do before. Uh Uh-oh. Warning signs, red flags. (laughs) (laughs) The first spot was a storage closet slash shed with a super haunted chair that we all got to sit in. Parentheses, why did we all just do this? No questions asked. As we all took our turns in the chair and with the equipment and not much at all going on, my older sister, who is scarily tuned into the spirit world, said suddenly, they don't like the door being open. Absolutely not. In a monotone voice, the sister said this. Our guide said, 
okay. And beckoned us all inside the cramped shed. And as soon as the door shut behind the last participant, the EMF meters lit up like Christmas lights and a second figure appeared on the SLS beside my nephew in the haunted chair. The SLS, by the way, is like a, the stick figure camera that you sometimes see on ghost adventures. It's, it's mm -hmm. really creepy. Finally, it was my turn to sit in the chair. The guide handed me the blindfold and headphones and asked me if I was still up for it. Let's do this. I sat down, flipped on the spirit box, and blocked out the outside world. At first, nothing. Garbled backwards AM radio talk. Then, old boy, honor, 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 ready to mm. go. As it turns out, one of the spirits in this location is a man who was wrongly convicted of a murder he didn't commit and hanged for the crime. And our guide has been working tirelessly to convince him to move on. So tirelessly, in fact, that he has gotten a judge to agree to visit the shed and commute the sentence in the coming weeks. Oh my God. Wow. wow. And apparently I was answering the questions that our guide was directing to the spirit. Ooh, I got like scalp chills. I yeah, had that uh, honor, honor, honor is very a little too much. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little too far. Thanks. If I were sitting there, I'd go, ooh, time to take a walk outside, take a go to bathroom break. Let's take a quick <laughs> breather. You know, is there a 7-Eleven around here? Then the back legs of the chair, which were against the wall opposite where the group was standing, lurched forward. Ooh, that's, I don't know if this is anything. That's a no from me, dog. It's <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a big no but also i wonder i mean i know that that's probably not how it happened but if you think about like hanging someone hanging and the chair getting <gasps> pushed just a thought oh I don't my I don't god Christine. i'm assuming that's not how they hang prisoners you know back then but it's just a thought Ooh, not oh the imagery though Ugh, yeah gross I knew if I said anything, the session would end, so I kept quiet. I wanted to get the most I could out of this experience. I continued to listen to the static. This is in quotes, so this is the spirit talking. I'm done. Enough. End it. Oh, my God. And then a masculine roar in my right ear so loud I threw the headphones and the guide immediately grabbed me, took my shaking self outside and sprayed me down with holy water. <laughs> You know what? That guy came fucking prepared. He was like, he was. I'm walking them into some treacherous waters, but I'm going to handle it by the end. Don't even worry. He's going to bring the judge over. We're all going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> he knows Maybe what he's you hang doing. Up. That guy's onto something. Maybe we should do that on our next ghost hunt. Maybe I kind of we... love it that he has a spray method for the holy water. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm chill saying. with that. I'm chill with that. Oh, my goodness. The haunted chair belonged to one spirit who was known to be particularly malicious and his patience with people in his seat would run out during the tour visits. I guess being the last in the chair and talking to someone else was enough for him to make his presence known. It was incredible. And if not for, and that's why we drink, I wouldn't have known half of what was happening. Thank you, M. Also, <laughs> huge welcome. shout out to the Paranormal Society of New Orleans. And it says, not sure if you can read this part too late, but they're doing incredible work. And I oh. they feel like they deserve a shout out. Sounds like they do know what they're doing. Also, my sister and I accidentally connected with our dead grandmother at the second location. But that's a story for another time. Always Thanks is. for all you do, Jennifer. That was a good <sighs> one. I'll tell you. I don't wish to be Jennifer. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Em's like, I like sitting right here in this chair. And no if I watched, chair. if I watched her or you or anyone throw their headphones off out of fear, I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like, and let's, I'm just gonna go get the car keys. I'm like, I don't need to be here. Yeah. If you're out, I'm out. Like, that's always been I my feel like line. That's enough so. of a jump scare, you know, like, okay, I'm scared enough just watching you be scared. So I'm out. Yeah. I do like that you, that we all do have that you, me and Eva have that understanding though of like, if you're out, I'm out. Yeah. And that goes yep. outside of um, paranormal investigations. It goes for like recording days. For it goes for yeah. like, it, like if we like, uh, uh, this has never happened, but if something were to go terribly wrong on tour and like the show's just not going as planned, if yep. it were to get really bad, if you're out, I'm out. Like, I, we have it's a good, we have a safety safe hold. What's it called? A, sa uh, a safe. We have a code. We have safe holder. What am I talking about? I don't know. I'm talking about our secret code. We I know, code but word. I'm just saying we have the, uh, structures in place. 
in case <laughs> the structure anything. is if you're out i'm out <laughs> yeah the, correct that's the structure um, and uh you know hopefully we don't have to use it again anytime soon but you never know jennifer maybe make that agreement with your friends um next time you go on one of those things it's like the second i hear a goddamn growl <laughs> we haul ass and like Seriously. don't don't look back <laughs> you are giving me chills Ugh. Um, okay, the next one uh, is from Maddie, who uses she, her pronouns. Thank you for normalizing pronouns. And the subject line is a ghost slapped my booty, which <laughs> we have that in common. So, Polter groped. Polter groped. So uh, this says, hi, Em and Christine. I'm currently listening to your episode where Em covers the Shakers Cigar Bar in Milwaukee. We got a lot of uh, people writing in about that That's one. That's right. You did say that. That one was uh, super creepy. It was um, a hit. I got so excited as I took a tour there recently. Shakers is a very popular spot for fans of ghosts and true crime. My friend and I went uh, first to take a Jeffrey Dahmer tour. Oh. Wow. And the road that Shakers is on was a hot spot for Dahmer to pick up his victims. Yikes. Oh, also, Shakers was a place for where Dahmer visited, and they even have the stool he used there on display. <gasps> now, that feels like they... I, I hope for the um for the sake of honesty that's true but i kind of call bullshit mm. yeah because i feel like you wouldn't know which bar or stool he sat at like he got away with it for so long first of all he probably sat at a bunch of bar stools mm. second of all like i feel like by the time he was famous there was a huge gap between the last time he went there i mean i don't know the story maybe he was there the day he got arrested or something this is hilarious everybody take note eva write this down this is the first time m's been the skeptic of anything ever um i just well so i i want it to be true i true i want it to be true and i hope i'm wrong but i feel like th if i ran a bar that like now an infamous person had been at i would just grab a, a stool and be like, oh, <laughs> i would just like he scratch sat here. the initials into the stool and be like look what i found you guys yeah isn't it's that jd crazy? on it <laughs> <laughs> i hope i'm wrong but i feel like they probably just wanted to make a quick buck and i totally get why they would want to do yeah, that because yeah. enough people Em's would come just jealous that. that they didn't think of it first i think i'm just jealous i didn't think of it first. so <laughs> i hope i hope that's true um uh no i did not sit on the bar stool okay that's, that's a good probably thing for now that's just in case that's, yeah um okay on to the ghost i convinced my husband a couple months ago to go on a ghost tour there which I don't think he really believes in, Blaze. But that man <laughs> embraces my weird interests, Blaze. So Aww. I'm happy. <laughs> Anyways, the first place that we went was the basement. I feel like that's the last place you should go. Yeah. But... <laughs> uh, and man, did I hate it. <laughs> uh. There's a safe down there, which they think may be from the Capones, that they <laughs> have not been able to open. I love that they still haven't opened it. Um Ugh. But our tour guide said that she never wants them to get it open. And the owner has a camera watching the safe and it will literally move. First of Ew. all, safes are fucking heavy. That's Why heavy. is it moving? It Wasn't that the one where in the basement that guy saw somebody like saw himself yes. run mm -hmm. and he ran at himself from the perspective of a spirit? Yeah, he like went into a trance and he mm. astral projected... Ugh. And he could now see through the demon's eyes who was staring at him. As it like ran at him. Yeah, forget and it. And it charged at, he charged at himself through the eyes of the demon. Ugh. In that basement. Woo! Yeah. Creepy place. So a heavy ass safe is also moving on its own. Yes. Um, And it says here, the safe is heavy. Like you need multiple people to try and move that thing. So that's terrifying. Yeah. Um. So we were walking into another area of the basement and our tour guide used dowsing rods to try and talk to O'Connor, a male ghost that y'all talked about on the episode. She asked to have the rods point in the direction of where he was. And of course, it's right next to me. <laughs> These are dowsing rods we're talking? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, point where point wherever you are and then a point right uh, next to It her. spins to you. It's like spin the bottle, but the worst version ever. It's... I mean, yeah, it's not good. <laughs> Funny enough, right before she asked the spirit to do this, it popped into my head that it, he was standing by me. But So freaked out, we started walking up the stairs to get out, and my husband and I were the last people walking up. He was behind me, but far enough away that he couldn't touch me. As we were going up, I felt a hand hit my butt. I immediately <laughs> looked at my husband, and he had no idea what I was talking about. Pretty sure it was O'Connor. 
Anyways, the experience was a little creepy, but also I had a good laugh. Guess I made that ghost's day. Ooh, I hate Ooh. that it was standing next to you. It wanted yeah, people to know it was next to you. For you. Yeah, he, he, you have a bit of some paranormal riz, I think. Um, some riz. Tom, <laughs> uh, I don't think you knew what you were doing there, some but ghostly uh, riz. Uh, I have a more terrifying story of a time I heard a woman cackling in an asylum. But that's for another day. Oh, come on. Thanks for reading and keep doing what you're doing, Maddie. These guys know what they're doing with these stories for another day. Mm hmm. Keeping me on my toes. Oy. Wow. Well, what a tale, Maddie. Uh, it, I hope he just left it at the booty slap and moved moved on to someone else. Because, uh, yeah, enough. it. It makes me not feel bad about the time my butt got grabbed because it was so much simpler than that. Um, and it was <laughs> not in one of the scariest topics we've ever covered. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. At least yours. But yours was like in a bed, right? So like that's kind Mine of scary because you can't really escape. And it was right above the bed was sitting on top of the decomposition stain. You know, Casual. you remember. So I wonder, I sometimes I wonder, like, was my butt being grabbed or was he just rolling over in his own sleep, you know? And uh, I just kind of got swatted. You know what? That's a story for another day. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this one's from Tracy. She, her, it's called A Tale of Dowsing Rods, Top Hats, and Flashing Balls. Okay. How razzle-dazzle. Okay. Ooh la la. Uh, so Eva did say that some of these are dowsing rod stories, which... um. I'm especially excited about because I love me some dowsing rods. Mm -hmm. This says, greetings one and all from Down Under. Did you get it? I got it. Down Under. <laughs> Down Under. Is this I'm thing sorry. on? <laughs> uh, it's on and everyone else has turned us off. So Cool. Okay, great. Uh, just as I suspected. I had an experience on a ghost hunt last night. Oh, when was this sent? Oh, July of this year. Oh, nice. I had an experience on a ghost hunt last night that I just have to share with you. As for me, it was 100% evidence that ghosts are real. Ooh. Over the course of three and a half hours, my BFF and I went on an investigation tour in the Blue Mountains of New South Wales. While the night was giving us a few spooky moments with REM pod, ovalis, EMF, and SLS camera evidence, it was when I picked up a pair of dowsing rods for the first time that shit got real. Isn't that mm. how it always goes, Em, with these dowsing rods? I mean, I feel like, yeah. It looks you so had... unassuming. I think that's what it is. Everything else looks so like high-tech Ghostbusters, yeah. and sometimes you just got to work with the classics. The basic. You know? Yeah, yeah, the tradition. I feel like that's why I was always... Uh, not expecting it to go as dark and crazy as it does with those dowsing rods. Like, I don't also, expect I, it to be as scary as it is. I feel like skeptics out there can easily argue this. But in my brain, I feel like also with all the high tech stuff, you can always, if you wanted to try to debunk something, you could try to say that the machine glitched or something. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Or the lights or the batteries are dying or whatever. But dowsing rods, they got no batteries. They got nothing going on. They just move. And it's, you know, there's no, I feel like a lot of, this is where I think skeptics could be like, um, it's your own hands or whatever. But I feel like there's a lot less room. There's a lot less excuses for yes, why. Like f f less margin of, for margin of error. And I don't know. There's something cr especially creepy about just like the simple m movement of them. I don't know. It, and they're a tale as old as time. Like yes. it, everyone has been able to rely on them throughout. And people have the used centuries. them not just for, you know, for a, a lot of other things. So they work for a lot of people for a lot of reasons. Just saying. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Through an app on one of the attendees' phones, we'd gotten some suspiciously accurate words and sentences over the course of the evening, including the name Larry. We decided to have a conversation with Larry, and after setting the answers with the rods and testing some questions, all with accurate answers, we got to work. It was fascinating stuff. We deduced that there were 17 people in the room, though whether or not that included the six of us that were there and alive, I'm not sure. Ugh. But with us having been told the name Larry, he was our focus. I playfully asked him if he liked me, and the answer was a resounding no. Bye, girl. I'd be like, you know what, Larry? It's been real. Peace. Larry, and I, uh, the feeling is mutual, my man. I'd be like, we went from 17 people to 16 because I'm out of here. 
and I'm calling you Lawrence now because I am not even going to give you the nickname. <laughs> okay. Weird, but we can't be liked by everyone, right? I guess not. Shortly afterwards, I handed over the dowsing rods to someone else while I went off to participate in another experiment. When I returned, they were still talking to Larry, and slowly we pieced together his story. After a run of constant yes answers with the rods not moving, I had the bright idea to ask a question that Larry, who had just told us he'd gotten a girl pregnant, would surely say no to to make sure he was still with us. Well, let's just say that you should never question someone's gender, even if they're oh. dead. I got the no I was after, sure, but it seems that Larry took my joke as an invitation to turn the tables. Uh-oh. We had a ball on the nearby table that would flash when it was touched, and boy, did it start flashing when I got that no. So just to clarify, folks, if if because I think I had to read between the lines a bit, she had asked if uh, the the ghost was a woman, and that's when it said no in a resounding fashion and made, him, made Larry very mad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I apologized instead asking if he was the manliest man alive. A resounding yes with more Oof. flashing. Yeah, I sounds asked. Like, sounds like an alpha author. male. Yeah, yeah. He sounds like a badass. I asked if he forgave me. I have never seen the rods move so quickly to know. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> we were all incre- <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Seriously, like, give it a rest, guy. We were all incredibly amused, and I continued to apologize with the lights flashing almost every time I asked a question. I groveled, telling him I only asked if he was a girl so that we could get a no, pleading for his forgiveness. That's when the most batshit fucking insane thing happened. The girl's app on her phone, it said my last name. Ugh. <laughs> I hate when they know information you haven't offered off. Ew, like, I'm so ooh. creeped out, dude. Oh, that's a I hate one. this. I like to I think that it. she has the craziest batshit last name too, instead of like yeah, Smith, I know, right? You know? I I'm trying to think of what it could possibly be. I don't know, but that is creepy, dude. Now listen, I'm very suspicious of most ghost hunting equipment, especially apps. We all know that our phones listen to us, and had it said my first name, I wouldn't be so bothered. It had been said multiple times that night. Uh oh, great. But my last name. Only my best friend and the tour operator, who wasn't with our group at the time, would know that. Sure, it's a common name, but you cannot convince me that that shit was a coincidence. (laughs) I was noping out hard and honestly was starting to panic a little, but that was nothing compared to when the ball started flashing and her phone added one more word. Kill. Ugh. I can't. See ya. I was a sobbing mess by this point, and it wasn't helped when Lucifer followed a few seconds later. Another lovely lady in the group quickly stripped off her crystal protection necklace and handed it to me, while the guide who was with us addressed Larry directly and told him that enough was enough. She knew that the ghosts in this particular location could be very cheeky, and it seems Larry had decided to give me a good ribbing. (laughs) Once the group got me settled down, I addressed Larry again, asking if he was just messing with me. Yes. I asked if I was forgiven now. Yes. I was filled with relief. For a minute there, I'd been sure I was about to be brutally murdered by a demon. (laughs) You know, I do wonder, like, like, if you're a 12-year-old prankster and then now you're a ghost, like, you know you're going to fuck with people on the other side with ghost hunting equipment. So you almost can still never tell if the information you're getting is accurate. Because you know saying Lucifer is going to freak everyone out, you know? Yeah. You could just say it (laughs) and be like, no, it's just me. I'm 12. Yeah. (laughs) But I don't know. I'm totally with you. After this encounter, Larry and I started to get on well. In our private investigation time, my friend and I took the dowsing rods to have a more intimate conversation with him, asking him questions about his life, whether he liked having visitors. Yes. Whether he liked talking to us. Yes. And whether he would miss us when we left. No. (laughs) You know what? He's still direct. I appreciate that. Fair point. Yeah. You know, uh, if you don't want the answer, don't ask the question. After a while, we said our goodbyes and went off to investigate other areas, feeling pretty okay about our encounter now. But, oh, this was not the end of Larry. Uh-oh. After a fruitless investigation in another room, we walked through a small touristy room where there was a mirror and a hat rack with a sign inviting you to try on the hats. That's fun. As we were walking through the exit of the room, we heard a loud thud on the wooden floor. Assuming my friend had dropped her phone or ovulus, and with her assuming her phone had fallen from her pocket, we stopped and turned back. But no. 
There, on the floor just behind her, about two meters away from the hat rack, was the gray top hat sitting the right way up on the floor. Hmm. Oh, God. Oh, God. Two meters. That's six feet, people, just in case you're wondering. Nope. Yep. (laughs) Now, I'm no runner, but we left that area in record time. When the guide coaxed us back in to investigate what had happened, Logic soon told us that this hat was not there because it fell. We'd only heard one thud. It hadn't fallen and bounced or rolled. We would have heard more noises, and it likely would not have been sitting right side up. On a suspicion, I went back to the dowsing rods, and after setting them up, and I have to say I'm a little unsettled that they knew the color of my underwear, Ah. I (laughs) I asked Larry if he'd thrown the hat at us. Yes. Is it time for us to leave? We asked. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> by the way, Larry didn't have to tell you that. I could have said that now. I was going to say, M would, have, M would have volunteered that information for free. <laughs> just say it. Satisfied that we were now outstaying our welcome, I apologized and said another goodbye just in time for us to be called for a quick debriefing. Time was up and honestly not a moment too soon. So there you have it, the most convincing encounter I feel I might ever have in my entire life. I have no explanation for my name coming out of that phone, no explanation for the dowsing rods getting every test question right, and definitely no explanation for the hat. But I plan on going back there later this year, so... (laughs) Girl, Larry's learn. Like, Larry's like, uh, how many times do I have to tell you? Larry's like, read the room. Read the I room. <laughs> I'm, I'm literally throwing things at you. Read the room. So I guess we'll see if I have anything to share with you next time. Lots of love, Tracy. Oh my gosh, Tracy. Be careful. Tracy's a rabble rouser because I'd be She's like, I'd be like, hey, remember that up. one time and that only one time, that one time that we went somewhere and we'll never go back because it was one time? <laughs> And Tracy'd be like, that, what are you talking about? We're in the car on the way there again. Where the ghost said, I will not miss you when you leave. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> well, I do like the idea. I mean, the hat landing on just one thud is super creepy and it landing right side up. But yeah. you also know, like, um, what is it? Isn't it Van's shoes? They never they never flip upside down. Huh? Isn't that a thing where like Van's really? shoes, no matter how you throw them, they always are right side up? I wonder if I don't a top know if you hat caught does this, the same but thing. I'm a Converse girly, so I don't right, really sorry. know about the Vans. Converse, they are not like Vans. They will they are not end, the same. They'll okay. land in any which way direction. Gotcha. But I think Vans, I don't know if it's true or not, but the, the rumor is if you throw them- It sounds them like an at, urban legend. <laughs> if you throw them in any way, they'll always end right side up. They're always landing. Right really? Side. Yeah. I've never heard that, but um, that's a fun little fact. Fun fact. Uh, so maybe top hats are the same way is what I'm getting Okay. At. <laughs> Apparently it's really real um, that, that, that this happens. Oh. There's Everyone. an article from 2021. People shocked after realizing Vans shoes always land the right way up. I, I'm included in that. I'm shocked. Yeah. I feel like now a bunch of people are taking their Vans off really quickly to throw them somewhere. <laughs> I'm about to go get mine and try it out. I thought you said you were a converse girly. Ooh. Yeah, but also I lied because I have both because I have zero loyalty to anything. Rothy's? Well, that's Ooh, that's its own. Damn, I'll throw those walking you through fire air. today, Christine. I'm sorry. I love my Rothy's. You know that. <laughs> Although they will land in any direction. So yeah. And they're machine washable and made of water bottles. <laughs> Just in case okay, you forgot. This- this next one um, sounds like you wrote in because the subject line is dowsing rods and a lot of crying. Is it? My- and- <laughs> I didn't hear the crying. And- <laughs> is this my birthday episode? I feel like these are all catered toward me. Maybe Eva was uh, remembering me fondly when she picked these stories. If I find a goddamn cowboy in this, it's over <laughs> for Eva. Someone said howdy y'all and I didn't forget it. <laughs> so this is from Alex who uses she her pronouns. Thank you for normalizing pronouns. And Alex says, hi, Eva and friends. My name is Alex, and I want to submit a story after hearing the July 2023 listeners episode. Oh, a recent one. Okay. Mm. During the first story, you were all discussing having feelings or pulls to something in the universe, and I knew I had to write in my experience. In October 2022, my, oh, a year from right now, my husband and I went on our honeymoon to, oh God, now I'm going to mess it up, Galena, Illinois. I think it's Galena. Oh, Galena. Galena. I think it must be Galena, right? Which is in the upper part of Illinois. Um, almost we went on to a the honeymoon s- to the upper part of Illinois. <laughs> you know what? Maybe you had a really cool memory over there. I don't know. <laughs> uh, almost to the state lines connecting Illinois, Wisconsin, and Iowa. If that's the case, I hope part of your um, 
honeymoon was like being in all three states at the same time. Yeah. Like one of those pictures. By the I'm way, when I said that, those. I wasn't making fun of the honeymoon being there. I was saying instead of saying the name of the town, we should just say my honeymoon was in the upper part of the state. I know. So that I just wanted we, to. Oh, okay. I wanted to okay. make you look like I was like, like I didn't want to be goose. like bitchy. <laughs> yeah, no. I was just making the joke about the pronunciation. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, w- no. I always wish that Blaze and I had done like a not traditional honeymoon and had done something more like road trippy or I don't know. But I'm if sure there can... is one place that I need to go in the United States. I don't know this location, but if you know this location, you let me know. I want a picture where I can be in multiple states at one time. Okay. What? You don't know that location? There's multiple places like that. I know there's like oh. four corners. I haven't done that. Oh, so I was like, I'm that's... pretty sure you put that in our book when we published it. I want, I'm not done with my listicle. I need a place that does that. Oh. I need a place with at least two giant Adirondack chairs. At least okay. two photo ops. At least. I need a place with a good sandwich. And I need a place that um, has cobblestone. So oh, good luck. That's a perfect combination. Is it? I don't know. Can I come? I, it doesn't have to all be cobblestone, but I would like one alleyway where I can take a picture. You know what Hell I'm saying? Hell yeah. Can I come okay. with you on your Yeah. Movie? If cool. anyone knows that place, you let me know. Okay. Back to the story. <laughs> anyway. Um, I'm just like, I'm describing my perfect honeymoon. So, um. You know, maybe it's in back Galena. To, I guess back to Alex's honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> All the buildings in the center of this town are historical, um, with modern day shops, restaurants, and local businesses within them. Ugh, I love a boutique strip. Add oh, that, that to the sounds list. cool. Add that to the list. Yeah, if that boutique, one's cobblestone. Cobblestone boutiques. Yeah, maybe we just go here to Upper Illinois. It does sound so far. It's got a few things on my list. I'm, I'm waiting for the Adirondack it. chairs to pop up. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There are wineries and breweries throughout the whole territory, and it's a hella Civil War and Industrial Age history. Don't quote me, but the reason that this city is so haunted is that it was settled on a large limestone quarry, <gasps> and limestone holds onto energy very well. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, we have to go here. <laughs> I, it sounds amazing. I bet you we could drive there from my house. Let's do we, it. Let's, we could do it. Look it up. Look it up. Okay. Galena. Galena, oh, Illinois. We should, probably should learn how to say it um yeah before we go but Gal- there's time for that you know we, we could do that in the car on the way um <laughs> well, the oh man it's seven hours still seven that's hours we get road do that trip territory day. yeah that's road trip we wake and on up the way early through, we stop we stop at uh in chicago get get some uh wait halfway chicago? is chicago halfway is chicago oh my god look we wake up in the morning christina's where we're gonna go we oh wake come up on this is perfect give me the no. itinerary and we wake up in the morning okay uh-huh. and then we stop for lunch in Chicago. We just have a good time. We just hang oh out. We get a little. We get a little. We get a little. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. you know what we do. We, we get a little. We get a little portillos, a little shake, cake a shake, little, little, little hot dogs, ooh, ooh, little ooh, cake ooh. shake. Then we drive a little more. We end up in Galena, and now Bulls we're off. on cobblestone with the boutiques, Adirondack chair. We find one. There's got to be one within seven hours. Imagine sitting in the Adirondack chair and doing the Estes method. Shut the fuck up. That's enough. <laughs> Ah, and then I come behind it and push it forward. <laughs> and truly, and then I would say, turn the car around. We're done here. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you're going to leave without me, probably. <laughs> okay. So anyway, this place sounds amazing. I understand why you would on your honeymoon here now. Me too. Being October, my new husband and I were fully in the Halloween spirit and listening mm. to it. And that's why we drink on our car ride there. And in the nature of the podcast, we decided to go on a brewery ghost tour called the Matthews Haunted Pub Crawl. This place has everything. I mean, what more could you want? Put drinking and anything spiritual together and my husband and I will absolutely be there. Uh, The entire town goes headfirst into the Halloween season, embracing their rich history along with the ghosts that come with it. It is truly my type of place. Our tour guide, Matthew, which I love that this was called Matthew's Haunted Pub Crawl. I thought and now- that was going to be a ghost or something. That's the tour guide. <laughs> he just named it after himself. This is Christine's ghost hunt. It's just me at a bar telling you ghost stories. I mean, oh my gosh. That's hilarious. Our tour guide, Matthew, was born and raised here and currently lives in a historical house here. He had so much knowledge to relay during our time hopping from tavern to tavern. He was clad in a top hat and period coat, which added to the fun and lure of the evening. I love that Matthew was like, I have these things in my closet. Let's just make a tour of it. He's like, "Uh, what else am I going to do with this top hat? (laughs) 
<laughs> the tour started at 10 p.m., so the antique la- lanterns and dim lights of the pubs were the only light source illuminating the cobblestone streets. No! Christine? <laughs> This is the place for us. Oh my we god! We made it into the first you know location. What? We're gonna bring our own Adirondack chairs. Who cares? Put them in this you, back seat. I'm sure they got a good sandwich somewhere over there. Yeah, That's, we'll find it. Yeah, we'll out. We'll make do. Uh, uh, I love this place. Okay. By the way, it's you were right. It's Galena. I looked it up. Okay. 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 Good. 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 We have to call <laughs> Matthew. Our, you know he's gonna. We have, Matthew, we're coming. <laughs> Matthew is going to handle this tour for us. I already know. I'm so excited. We made it into the first location, where which was the basement of the DeSoto House Hotel on Main Street. And let me tell you, the place was hella old and hella creepy. Mm. It is still a functioning hotel and restaurant to this day and harbors a ginormous yet gruesome history. But that's a story for another day. <laughs> After getting our drinks, Matthew starts telling stories and showing pictures of what goes on in the DeSoto House Hotel on the Daily. He talked about people seeing shadows, hearing noises, and feeling cold spots in the very room that we were in. He had photo proof from previous tours with him of apparitions and orbs that other tour goers had taken and shared, which sent chills down my spine each time I saw them. He also handed out EVP detectors for, uh, I think that was EMF detectors, for Mm. everyone to hold during the tour as well. After a few historical facts and ghost stories, he decided it was time to pull out his dowsing rods. Hey. And like Christine, I love dowsing rods. I love Matthew. Um, and I love Galena. <laughs> Em's like, I forget everybody else. <laughs> Matthew asked if anyone had intentions or feelings to come up and try out the rods, and my hand shot up. I am absolutely not someone who likes the attention on me and would not have normally done something like this. It was almost hard to get married being in front of people without passing out from the embarrassment. It's scary. It's really embarrassing. I feel you. It's one of the reasons I won't get married. Um. (laughs) (laughs) Except you have to officiate my wedding and do all the talking. So I kind of made it worse for you. Sorry. I've already walked down an aisle and Christine was already there. So like, what more do I need? You had your soulmate Gio with you. You walked with him down the aisle. That's exactly right. I walked down the aisle with the most handsome man the world has ever seen. I've already done it. And we did gave lots of kisses. Very furry. A very furry man. You know I love them. Oh. oh, I missed that little tummy of his. Know. Oh, He's okay. A little bug. After a few historical facts, oh, dowsing rods, blah, 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 blah. I got to the front of the room and suddenly everyone's uh, EMF detectors start going crazy. In the video my husband took, you can hear him whispering, what the fuck, over and over <laughs> again. I had to focus my breathing and had the rod show me their yes and no. Like how to how to do yes and no. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I then asked the spirit uh, connected with me if they knew me, and they swung to the right saying no. Matthew prompted me to ask if they knew anyone in the room, and they crossed slightly in front of me signaling yes. I immediately looked to my left and noticed a woman start becoming emotional. Oh. Um, Matthew tells me to say, point to who you know in this room, and the rod swiveled directly to her, <gasps> um, and then almost stopping pinpoint on her. Oh the my God. EMF detectors were going crazy as well, and Matthew then goes over to the woman and asks, who are we connecting to? The woman goes imagine on to... Your, ex- imagine that lady's the person who doesn't want attention on her, and all of a sudden the things are pointing at her, and everyone's like, who are we talking to? Oh, <laughs> yeah. pressure. Well, regale me with all of your dead loved ones tell, yeah, that could be coming near past. us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, God, I... Yeah. <laughs> Nightmare Central is like, the last thing I wanted was to be... Yeah, I was like, just thought I'd grab a beer and like see what this was all about, but it's like okay. I got dragged here by my husband. Yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> the wife goes on to explain that she and her partner visited her best friend's grave earlier that day. She her friend died exactly twelve years ago <gasps> near Galena in a car <sighs> accident. And when she went to the friend's grave site, she asked for a sign saying she was okay. It turns out that the person who died was named Kelsey and she came through uh, to let her best friend know that she was okay. Oh. Kelsey made the rods answer that she was indeed fine on the other side and was happy. And the woman took that as a very sure sign and cried happy tears, as did I. It was such a heartwarming moment that I'll never forget. And after that interaction, Matthew prompted me to say goodbye to Kelsey's spirit and had me move on to someone else that was with me. My maternal grandmother came through and showed me her yes and no on the dowsing rods. 
And she had passed away when I was five years old, and everyone always talks about how much she adored me as a child. Mm. I always felt that she has been my spirit guide or guardian angel throughout my life. And I prompted her to see if she was present on my wedding day, and she answered yes. I began crying, and she also answered that she loved my husband, Luke, and she was very proud of me. Matthew then asked me to say goodbye, and when I did, the rods crossed and shot around to me very quickly. Um, Matthew said that my grandmother in that moment gave me a hug. (gasps) Oh, so they crossed like arms over you. That's really sweet. (laughs) All in all, Galena was an amazing experience. And my husband and I just went for our one year anniversary and had (gasps) many more creepy experiences in that haunted town. Thank you for taking the time to read my story. I promise we aren't all bad. Signed, Uh-oh. Alex the November Scorpio. Mm. <laughs> nah, I don't know about that, but okay. That's very Wow, nice. what a yeah. tale. Oh. When I heard crying or like it was a lot of crying or whatever in the subject, I thought it was going to be something like really upsetting, but it sounds like it was a happy, a happy moment. When we've got a true crime paranormal show and then you hear crying from a listener, you assume it is tragic. Exactly. <laughs> so. Exactly. You don't get your hopes up for any happy tears. But yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. This um, this town looks unbelievable. I, think I honestly am afraid to look at it because then I'll obsess. I know. I think we're meant to go here. Uh, not okay. to be like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> but like. It is it's just like how we say, if so you're out, I'm out. If you're in, I'm in. You know? Yes! I know. It goes both ways. Yep. We swing both ways, you know? <laughs> just you. Just me. Uh, here's a picture of it, and it's beautiful. Uh, I'm sending you a little photo. I think by the end of the day, I will have an, an entire itinerary planned for I us. I think by the end of the day, I'm going to check find my friends, and you're going to be in northern <laughs> Illinois. And I'm going to be like, how did, what? <laughs> Oh, it's so cute. And then there's a picture of it in the at Christmas time and it Stop looks so it. Oh, it's Stop. so cute. Oh my gosh, we got to go. Oh um, my god, it looks like the inside of a snow globe. It's so precious. Literally. I think when uh It's literally oh. talk about nature cozy. There's a restaurant in this picture called yeah. the Log Cabin Fine Food. Forget and it. And cocktails. Forget. I it. love it. Let's go. Okay, fine. I'll move there. Okay. I will be on okay, Zillow fine, tonight. Okay, fine if you insist. Oh, I just threw my own headphones off. <laughs> I got a little too excited. Um, we're definitely going. Okay, end of story. Anyway, back to this. Uh, this is a bonus story, folks. There's one more story uh, that I get to read to you. It's called Public Library Ghost Hunting Kit, and it was sent in by Kate. All right, here we go. Hey, not really a story, but found out my public library has a rental ghost hunting kit in the maker's lab. Okay, so this isn't even a story. What is this, this Galena? Okay. (laughs) This is like a fun fact for the end of the episode. Wow, a rental ghost hunting kit in the maker's lab. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. Okay, here's a list of what it includes. Quote, our brand new ghost hunting kit includes everything you need to search for a ghostly spirit. A spirit box used for communication with radio waves, EMF reader used for sensing changes in electromagnetic fields, voice recorder used for recording sessions and picking up EVPs, infrared thermometer used to scan for changes in the temperature, dowsing rods. So we should have basically read this email before I tried to explain all the other shit. (laughs) Or like before we ever went to the Queen Mary or anything. Or that, yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Who knew we could rent this from the library? I know, it would have been so much cheaper. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Dowsing rods and pendulum used for communication, headlamps used for illumination and safety, and then haunted Roche- Rochester, Christine. I was oh going to say God, haunted please. Road Atlas. Haunted <laughs> Rochester, a supernatural history of the Lower Genesee by Mason Winfield. So, we're, um, Oh, and then finally, last item, Ghost Hunting for Dummies by Zach Bagans. Of course. Of, of course. course. It's a library. They have to put some books in there. You know, this just goes to oh, show wait, wait. everybody. And then Kate what? wrote... Happy taxpayer here. Cheers. (laughs) (laughs) I was going to say, this is just a reminder to everybody how we don't even know the benefits that come out of our public libraries. That's right. (laughs) Pay your taxes, folks. (laughs) This is a PSA that everyone should appreciate their library a whole lot more than we do. Yeah. I hope some libertarians out there changed their mind because of this. Yes, yes, yes. And also, dare I say, let's all go to our public library and demand a ghost hunting kit be put on rent. And when we say demand, you know, don't yell at the employees. They're... When I it's say hard. demand, I mean write please a lot to please. the nicest one. Pretty nicest please. librarian. Okay, I just Googled library ghost hunting kit. 
uh, wow, okay, there are multiple libraries that have these folks. So oh, I can't. So we're already it. halfway done. <laughs> we did it. We Good did job, it. Look everyone. at us. Wow. Okay, there's one in Southwick, Massachusetts that has one. So yeah, I mean, listen, let's uh, library librarians. They know what they know what's up. I like that a librarian was just sitting around being like, you know what this place could fucking use. You know what this place needs. And you know what? Maybe it's because their library is haunted and maybe on her lunch break, she checks it out and she goes, goes to the library. I did this because it's for the taxpayers, but not really. (laughs) I like to think that she Dewey decimaled it into like the occult section of the book, you know? Oh my God. (laughs) Genius. Uh, Well, good one to end on for sure. Yeah. That was a, that was a doozy. Also just go check out your library. It's, it has fun stuff, even if it doesn't. You can still get ghost hunting for dummies at most libraries. So, you know. Um, in the words of Arthur, having fun isn't hard when you've when? got a library card. That's right. Words to live by. That's the truth. And uh, hey, that just Arthur. it also invites people like me who don't like reading into a library anyway. Because you hey, know I want to go look at the ghost hunting kit. All are welcome. I'm sure there's some pictures in ghost hunting for dummies. <sighs> there are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like there are, don't even ask how i know and at the very least there's a picture of zach bagans on the front to kind of gawk at so you know if, if that's your thing <laughs> oh well i hope everyone has a happy november and the next time we see you it will be our last listener story of the year <laughs> hard to believe uh get me out of here um <laughs> 2023 <laughs> is we can be done it's okay we're done okay got it it's okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, I'm excited. I think 2024 could be, could be the one. We'll see. Watch your mouth. You know how that turns out for us. Every could be. Time I didn't say will be. I said okay. could be. Could also not be. So no matter what, I'm right. Okay. Okay. Um, hmm. How do we end this? Pass. The. Cranberry. Sauce. Where. Having. Mashed. Potatoes. Ooh. The. Turkey. Looks. Great. Thank. You for loving me thank you for being there everyone's thanking the whole world's thanking you for thanking us for thanking you kill Kill the the turkey turkey. (laughs) (laughs) it's just fun every time (laughs) and that's why we drink Kill the turkey. <laughs> <laughs>